Hello, my name is Jackie Elliott. I'm a consultant in Sheffield. Here are my disclosures. And in this module, I'm talking about bolus insulin for those people using pumps. And the idea is to have a better idea about what the bolus insulin should be doing, feel more confident in um, actually being able to respond to the traces in the Freestyle Libra, and then understand what factors might need to change. So what is the role of bolus insulin? There are two jobs. The first job is to cover the glucose rise when you eat carbohydrate or if you drink carbohydrate. Some people have the same insulin to carbohydrate ratio throughout the day. But quite often, people need different insulin to carbohydrate ratios. And it's more often that people need a higher ratio at breakfast. So in this example, this is one and a half units per 10 grams at breakfast time, but only one unit per 10 grams in the lunchtime and the evening. The second thing that bolus insulin do does is to correct a higher blood glucose. And to do this properly, you need to know what your correction factor or your insulin sensitivity factor is. And again, this could vary uh, throughout the day, especially if you're more active at particular times of day than others. So remember, your pump only contains quick acting insulin, but it's not that quick. It does take time for the bolus insulin to have its full effect, usually three to four hours. And this is known as the action time, and that's actually pre-programmed into your pump. It does take time for bolus insulin to be absorbed to have any effect on glucose. So how do you assess how much bolus insulin you need? Well, first of all, let's look at the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. In order to do this, you need to choose a meal time when your glucose is in range before the meal. So in this example, we're looking at the evening, and at 6 o'clock, uh, there's a bolus insulin and some carbohydrate. And if you've got the right ratio, then you'll find that your glucose falls back into the target range three to four hours later. So this can only happen if the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is correct and if you count the carbohydrate correctly. If your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too low, as in this example, you'll find that the glucose does not fall back into the target range. And the worry at with this time of day, eating before bed, and then if you don't check your glucose and you correct, your carb ratio is too low, then you'll be high all night long. Of course, it could also happen that you've underestimated the amount of carbohydrate with the evening meal or forgot to bolus with the snacks that you've had after the evening meal. So obviously this is one of the big advantages of being up on a pump, that you can bolus again when you snack. So in this example, this is over lunchtime. If you don't cover the snack mid-afternoon, the glucose will rise. You have two choices. You can snack and give the bolus insulin the time of that snack, or if you know that you snack every afternoon, then you could add on the carbohydrate to the lunchtime dose and just do one bolus all at the same time. If the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too high, then you'll have problems with hypoglycemia. And again, if you think this might be a problem, you need to look at a time when you've gone into a meal with a normal glucose and see what happens three to four hours later. And if you're regularly going hypo, in this case around the evening meal, obviously the risk is that you could be hypo overnight. It doesn't have to be that it's your basal insulin that's wrong. It could be that your insulin to carbohydrate ratio in the evening is incorrect. The AGP is a way of looking at lots of data. So it gives you an idea of where the problem might be. And in this example, you can see that the median goes above the desired target range from late morning through to most of the day, back down into range before bed. But before you make any adjustments to any of the settings in your pump, you need to look at individual days. So the two traces here show that the user has gone into breakfast with a normal blood glucose, eaten, injected their bolus insulin, and it's not come back down to the range. Therefore, the insulin to carbohydrate ratio at breakfast time is incorrect. At lunchtime, they eat again, they bolus again, it doesn't come back down into range. But it could be the ratio is wrong, or it could be the correction factor is wrong. You don't know. You need to look at a time when you're actually in range before lunch. In this example, in the evening, it's in range one day, so it looks as if the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is correct. But on the next evening, you can see that it doesn't come back down into range. So perhaps the correction factor in the evening is not right. You'd need to look at more days before you made any firm decisions. 
So when should you bolus? You'll have seen on your freestyle Libra, I'm sure, peaks from your eating that you weren't expecting, bigger peaks than you were expecting. And in this example from this AGP, you can tell when the user is eating. They're having breakfast about eight o'clock. They're bolusing and it does come back down into the right range. So they've got the right insulin to carbohydrate ratio. They then bolus again at lunchtime. And again, they've got the right ratio. They come back down into range early evening. The timing of the evening uh, eating and bolusing is a little bit more variable as life is. So back to the question, when should you bolus? If you bolus at the start of a meal, then you'll see that there's quite a steep glucose rise and the chances are that your glucose will go above 10. If you remember, we're trying to maximise the amount of time that your glucose is between 4 and 10 and minimise the amount of time that your glucose is above 10. So in this example, we've shaded in blue the area that really you don't want. The way to get rid of that, well, is to bolus beforehand. And if you can regularly get into the habit of bolusing insulin 15 minutes, before a meal, you'll see that the glucose rise is smaller and it might not even go above 10. If it still goes above 10, then you might want to consider bringing the bolus insulin back even f further. Some people need 20 minutes in the morning around breakfast time. It's not unusual to need 30 minutes or more. This AGP shows somebody that has got into the habit of really injecting uh, before they're eating by at least 15 minutes and now you can't tell what time they're eating. So the other thing you need to do is to work out the correction factor to see if those levels are set correctly within your pump. So if you remember what a corrective dose should do is just bring a high glucose back down into the normal range. This user hasn't had breakfast, their glucose is 15 on waking, they take a five unit correction and their glucose falls down nicely uh, to the pre-programmed target of five. So their correction factor is two. One unit of insulin has brought down their glucose by two. Five units has brought it down by ten. For those of you that like to see the equation, here it is. And as I said, pumps will have a pre-programmed target. So what we're doing in the last example is saying, well, the glucose is 15, the target is 5, 15 minus 5 is 10, and then we divide by a correction factor of 2. It delivers five units. If, however, your correction factor is set too low, then you'll see because we're dividing by a smaller number, then that in turn will lead to bolusing more insulin than you actually need. And then the risk of that is hypose, not what you want at all. So in this example, different user, again, woken up with a glucose of 15, and they thought that they needed one unit to bring their glucose down by two. But if you actually look at the drop, you'll see the drop is bigger than that. The drop is 12.5. They've gone from a 15 down to a 2.5. So each one unit has dropped their glucose by 2.5, not two as they thought. If this happens repeatedly, if you find that when your glucose is high and you follow the advice on the pump, but yet you end up hypoglycemic, it means that your correction factor is too low. And in the long term, this can impair your warnings of uh, hypoglycemia because you're having too many hypos, but also you might gain weight because you'll end up consuming uh, carbohydrates in order to treat the hypo. And if you keep doing that day in, day out, you will put on weight that most users don't actually need. So when should you correct your glucose? We would suggest that it's only best to correct at least two to three hours after the last bolus. And this allows for most of the active insulin to have gone through. If you inject too close, as in this example, you end up with the two boluses too close together. We call this insulin stacking, and then the risk is hypoglycemia. So if you find that you are checking postprandially and you do correct, but then you go hypo, it will mean that the correction factor is not set correctly within the pump, and you need to reassess those correction factors. Even when you've done all that, there will be turbulence in your, uh, sorry, in your glucose requirements. If you exercise, you will need to decrease the bolus insulin. If you drink alcohol, you'll need to decrease the bolus insulin. Similarly, if you've had a recent hypo. And then there are times when we know that all users need more insulin if you're feeling stressed, uh, ill, or if you're consuming a high-fat meal. 
And then it's not always easy to judge carbohydrate, is it? So that also leads to turbulence in the glucose levels. Some situations are more difficult than others, but there are certain rules of thumb that you can use. So you can choose to reduce the bolus insulin if you know that you're about to do something that will naturally lower your glucose. And we would suggest that you start by halving the insulin to carbohydrate ratio or using an exercise setting of 50% within your pump. So you could do this if you're exercising and then you're eating uh, within an hour or two later, or if you're doing it the other way around and you're eating, but you know that you're going to be exercising within a couple of hours. If you drank lots of alcohol, then you ought to decrease the bolus insulin after that, or if you've had a recent hypo. The other thing that you might need to do is actually increase the bolus insulin sometimes. And this isn't by as much as the reduction, but by increasing it by perhaps 10 to 20%. And you would do that if you're feeling particularly stressed, if you know that you're not well or premenstrual. And for some, they need to also do this for high-fat meals. High-fat meals uh, make you more insulin resistant, so you do need more insulin. And as a starting point, you could add on between 25 and 65% extra, and then you could deliver half of that insulin at the beginning of the meal and in your pump, have it set that, so that the remainder of that bolus is delivered over, let's say, a couple of hours. You'll need to experiment. Everybody's different. So in conclusion, I think the Freestyle Libra is really good at showing you the effect of different foods for you on your glucose. We do know that if you can bolus 15 to 20 minutes beforehand with most meals, then the peaks will be smaller. Your time in range will increase. The time in range between 4 and 10 is what we're particularly interested in. And in time, your HbA1c should improve. So if your glucose is always high after a particular meal time, it would indicate that the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too low, assuming your basal insulin is not too low at that time. And if you're often hyper at the same time of day when you're in target pre-meal, that suggests that your insulin to carbohydrate ratio is too high, assuming your basal insulin is not too high at that time. Remember, it's always best to look for patterns. Have a look at several days' traces before changing an insulin to carb ratio or a correction factor. You may look at your data and just think, mm, there's no pattern at all. So in that situation, we would suggest that you go back to basics and really concentrate on accurately carb counting. And there are some modules within this set to help you with that. If you do spend time working out your insulin to carbohydrate ratios, which may differ during the day, as well as the correction factor, again, which may differ during the day, then that will mean that more often you are injecting the right amount of bolus insulin. Thank you.